Hello everyone. So today I'm going to uh, answer one of the commonest questions uh, that I get asked in my clinic. Doctor, what is the diet I should eat if I have rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or any of the other autoimmune diseases I treat? So the, the presentation I have today is actually meant to have a lot of scientific evidence behind it. So some of it is hard going, but I wanted it to be as thorough as possible. So I'm not just giving you information, which uh, I feel like giving you, but most of it is evidence-based. Uh, medicines so that uh, when you actually follow this diet or decide to take some of these supplements, you will be taking it based on evidence and science. I'm going to now share my screen uh, to pull up the presentation. And we're going to um, make this uh, start the presentation. So diet for rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, I first want to emphasize that there is no magic cure for autoimmune diseases. Uh, there is no um, nothing which, you know, you just suddenly take this and your rheumatoid arthritis will disappear completely. But there are diets and many things you can do to make your disease better. And besides rheumatoid arthritis, some of this advice also applies to other autoimmune conditions, which I treat, especially psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, um, uh, sometimes gut-related issues like ulcerative colitis, uh, and also uh, to um, lupus as well ankylosing spondylitis. So this is a diet uh, which, um, you know, just I'm going to talk about evidence and I'm going to talk about supplements. So I, I just want to let you know that if you want to reference this article, it's free on the internet. It's published in a peer-reviewed journal. It's called The Role of Diet Influencing Rheumatoid Arthritis Disease Activity. It's a very scientific article, so you may not um, really enjoy reading it. But I'm going to try and summarize most of uh, what we know in the talk uh, in the next few slides. Food is an emotional topic. We're all connected to food, not just to eat, but we eat because it connects us to our heritage, to our culture, to our parents, to what we did at home. But sometimes we've also picked up a lot of bad habits. We start snacking, we eat comfort foods. We say we can't live without sugar, we can't live without chocolate. And it's somehow very important to us uh, to have foods which may not be uh, necessarily good for us. So we have to look at where these emotional triggers come from. Why do you eat? Why do you overeat? Do you eat when you're stressed? Do you eat when you're emotionally upset? Do you eat when you're tired? Uh, I eat uh, rubbish when I feel like I deserve it, when I felt like I worked very hard or um, I'm very tired, then I decide to eat and snack on foods which are not necessarily good for me. So we need to understand that about ourselves and understand what does food mean to us? Is it going to be food is going to be something which is going to nourish you, which is going to take care of your body, or is it food which is you're going to use as a tool or a crutch uh, to manage your emotions? So usually what rheumatologists tell our patients and what I've been taught is, look, there's very little evidence about diets for rheumatoid arthritis. And even if there is a diet or you find that you eliminate certain foods and you get better, it's very hard to follow it in the future, so don't bother. So this is what I was taught but with the help of my patients and talking to nutritionists and reading, I've learned that there is evidence to use certain diets uh, which could be helpful to patients. So usually we just tell patients, okay, just follow a Mediterranean diet, eat a lot of vegetables and follow this pyramid. And the Mediterranean diet, yes, is one of the most um, healthy diets in the world. But some of the foods in the Mediterranean diets, like bread uh, or a lot of meat, for instance, may not be necessarily good for patients with arthritis or autoimmune diseases. So first let's talk about supplements because everyone wants to know how can I help myself? How can I boost my immune system? So you're not going to boost your immune system. There's no way to boost your immune system. If you have an autoimmune disease, your immune system is already triggered and already overacting. So you want to have a healthy immune system. So let's talk about some supplements which may help. First of all, omega-3, this is the most common one and the most studied supplement. There's a lot of evidence for omega-3, which is found in foods like salmon, fish, um, and flaxseed, which are vegetarian. Flaxseed is a very good source of omega-3. And the supplements, omega-3,000 to 5,000 milligrams a day, has been shown in various uh, studies to be very beneficial for patients with rheumatoid arthritis and also your methotrexate, which is a commonly used drug for rheumatoid arthritis, in one study, it was shown that methotrexate works better when combined with omega-3 fatty acids. 
The drawbacks of taking very high doses of omega-3 is you can get gas, gastric problems, gas belching, but otherwise it's a safe supplement to take. The scientific evidence or the, or the, um, you know, the references are in the slide, but I'm just going to talk you through all of them. Now you need to be taking omega-3 and not omega-6. A lot of supplements come as omega-3, 6, 9. And naturally we feel, oh, if I take more omega or more types of omega, that's better for me. And this is not the case. We need to have a right ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 in the body. If your omega-6 is too high, then pain increases actually. So we need to take only omega-3 so we have the right ratio in our body. And you know, if you're eating certain foods such as processed foods um, and you know, cooking the wrong types of oil such as canola oils, um, these kind of oils can increase your omega-6 and increase inflammation in your body. So first of all, if you're taking a supplement, take only omega-3 and avoid processed foods, um, very fatty foods and, um, and, and cooking with the wrong type of oils. So cooking with the right type of oils, that's a whole um, you know, um, subject and topic. But just briefly, when you cook, um, the best types of oil to cook in are coconut oil, olive oil. Uh, these are quite good to cook. But if you want to deep fry foods, uh, perhaps a seed oil like sunflower seed oil is okay. But usually we're not using canola or vegetable oils for cooking. What about calcium supplements? Should you be taking calcium supplements? Yes, uh, calcium supplements reduce um, your risk of fracture. Lots of people are worried about calcium supplements because they've read that they cause kidney stones and heart attacks. Um, and that's only if you have a diet which is very rich in dairy products, like if you're drinking a lot of milk, yogurt, and cheese, then you won't, don't, do not need the calcium supplements. Then you might have too much calcium in your body. But most of us are not drinking so much milk, yogurt, and cheese. Um, and hence, calcium supplementation is important. And later on in this talk, I will be talking about maybe cutting out dairy products for people who have autoimmune diseases. So then definitely you need to take a calcium supplement. The American College of Gui uh, Rheumatology guidelines are very clear that if you're taking any steroids, you need to be on both calcium and vitamin D. Also, there have been studies which do not really show that in rheumatoid arthritis, taking oral calcium supplements increase calcification in your arteries or lead to heart attacks, which has been portrayed on the internet and in the media. So you can take calcium supplements safely. What is the dose you should take? You should take about 600 milligrams or 500 milligram calcium, one tablet a day. That should be sufficient. And the rest of your calcium can come from food. Now the food which is most rich in calcium is dairy. One glass of milk or yogurt has 300 milligrams of calcium. But if I tell you to avoid a milk or yogurt, your calcium can come from foods like green leafy vegetables, broccoli, kale, uh, which, is, which is shown here. Fish, especially fish with bones, is a rich source. And nuts like almonds are, so, are rich in calcium as well. So just match your diet with the supplement you take. If you're taking a lot of calcium rich foods, you do not need a supplement. But if you're not drinking milk and yogurt, you definitely need a supplement. Vitamin D is one of the most important supplements. If you can do one thing or take one supplement, it is vitamin D. Many studies have shown a risk between type 1 diabetes, which is an autoimmune disease and low vitamin D. And also this uh, nice study which came from across the world showed us that patients who had low vitamin D also had um, poorly controlled rheumatoid arthritis. So vitamin D mostly comes from sunlight exposure. It's very hard to get it through food. Maybe a large, this large bit of salmon might have 1000 IU of, cal of vitamin D, but that's, that's impossible to get it really through your diet. Um, exposure to the sun, yes, is a good way to get vitamin D. So a Caucasian or light skinned person needs to spend 15 to 20 minutes in the sun a day to get, vitamin, to get sufficient vitamin D. But most people with pigment or colored people like myself would need very long exposure to sunlight, at least an hour with direct sunlight exposure. It doesn't matter the time of the day, but it needs to be direct without, without cloud cover and without smog. So with vitamin D, um, you know, most of us are not getting enough. Most of us are deficient. So take a supplement. If you're overweight, you need to take a higher dose. You need to take at least 5,000 IU per day. If you're a regular weight, you need to take 1,000 to 2,000 IU per day. 
But if you're deficient, you need to contact your doctor because you need a higher dose supplement, like 50,000 once a week, uh, to replace your vitamin D. So it's really important to have a normal vitamin D. So to summarize supplements, take a calcium supplement if your diet is inadequate, about 500 to 600 milligrams today. Vitamin D is anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 IU daily. Omega-3, usually people can tolerate between 1,000 to 3,000 milligrams per day. And I just briefly want to mention turmeric. The active ingredient is curcumin. And about 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams per day is a safe way of getting anti-inflammatory properties, anti-inflammation. It's an anti-inflammatory or a natural anti-inflammatory in the body. And studies have shown that this is beneficial and acts like a painkiller, especially for osteoarthritis. What about food? What should you eliminate? What should you be eating? So dietary in interventions, a lot of studies have told, a lot of papers have been written and said there's no use. Um, the studies are very small. Um, and, you know, they, we don't have a lot of data on diet and rheumatoid arthritis. The problem with doing good studies is, first of all, to get patients into the study, to agree to stay on a diet, to agree to have them stick to a diet. Lots of people drop out or they go cheat or eat something which is not supposed to be eaten. And then they're not sure if there's a placebo effect here. And funding for these studies is also a problem. But there have been people who have done some, some small studies on elimination diets. In this study by Panush, they found that when patients were fasting or on a severely restricted diet, their symptoms improved significantly. However, especially when they had milk reintroduced into the diet, they had episodes of pain swollen and tender joints were experienced. Similarly, I'm sure I'm going to mispronounce Professor Jelzin Krag and colleagues in Sweden. It was one of the early studies in 1991 showed that fasting is effective for reducing the symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. However, many patients relapsed as new foods were introduced in the diet. So they went on a fast and they didn't eat anything. And then they, uh, and this was published in The Lancet, which was one of the main uh, journals. So the pain and discomfort returns if a patient goes back to a normal diet. So you can see how hard it is to be on a fast. You can't be on a fast indefinitely, or you cannot eliminate many foods or eat a very restricted diet indefinitely. This is very hard. Now, the same group of people also published in 1999, they did this interesting experiment where they took 51 patients with rheumatoid arthritis and they divided them into two groups. They made them stay in two different spas. So our control group, they ate whatever normal diet, healthy diet, of course, and normal kinds of exercise. Um, and they did this for several weeks. And the uh, group which we're interested in, which was the experiment group, first was put on a fast for about three days. And they were not allowed to eat anything except um, uh, teas, herbal teas, garlic, um, uh, vegetable broth, some potatoes, parsley, and carrot juice. No fruit juices were allowed during this time because that's a lot of sugar. But they allowed ca carrot, beetroot, and celery juices. So they did this for about two to three days. Please do not try this without medical supervision. You can become really caloric deficient, and these people were under medical supervision and being monitored when this was done. So after this, they were slowly introduced foods like some vegetables, some beans, some carrots, uh, potatoes, etc. But they were not allowed to have dairy products or gluten-containing foods for about three and a half months. And these were, uh, these were stopped, and then they were slowly started again. And again, if the patient had any problems they were, with their joints, they were eliminated again. So what they found is, I'm not going to go through all these, that patients did clinically much better. They had reduced swollen and inflamed joints. Um, their whole well-being was much better when they were on this diet. 12 of the 27 patients um, uh, had, had quite significant, statistically significant improvements as compared to patients who ate the normal diet. And interestingly, even after one year, they continued to do better um, than the other patients who did not respond initially. We don't know if this is psychological, but the positive effects kept persisting even after the diet was discontinued. Maybe patients had food allergies. Um, maybe patients had other, um, other uh, issues, uh, or maybe because they were very malnourished, um, their immune system sort of got better. Um, also, we, we are very interested in the fecal flora. What that means is in the stool, when you pass stool out, the, the kind of bacteria which you uh, pass out they change. When you change your diet drastically or start eating a lot of healthy foods, and so these people had elimination of gluten, dairy, sugar, um, and a lot of unhealthy things such as the red meat, and they were almost on a vegetarian diet for a year. Um, 
their fecal flora changed over this year. That means their whole intestinal bacteria changed over the year. And the intestinal bacteria is so important in your immune system. So what is the role of the flora in the gut and, and, and rheumatoid arthritis? There's so many links between infections, gut, and the immune system. And these gut microbiome, the good and the bad bacteria in our intestine, are responsible for both protecting us from infection, but also sometimes when there's an imbalance, they are also responsible for autoimmune diseases. So this here, you can see here, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but this here is the intestinal lining. And very closely associated with the intestinal lining is the Peyer's patch, which is a collection of cells which are responsible and, and sort of, um, sort of um, are the, part of your immune system and regulate your immune responses. So the good bacteria and bad bacteria which are in the gut can, can um, uh, alter your immune system through the Peyer's patches but also by releasing harmful chemicals, they cause the, the cells, the gap between the cells to widen and toxic substances to enter the bloodstream and also influence the immune system. And this is called leaky gut. So patients like to use the term leaky, leaky gut. That means these bacteria are sort of damaging the, the lining of your gut and there is um, gaps between your cells. This has been well documented and show, shown and this is not any sort of made up story. So when your bacteria are imbalanced, you get a leaky gut and there's a low grade inflammation setup because your immune cells, which are just behind this barrier, activated. So a lot of studies have shown us that patients with rheumatoid arthritis and other autoimmune diseases have an altered gut bacteria. And this may be a very important factor. So how do we get the gut bacteria to go back into a healthy state? So of course, by eating the right foods, maybe by taking probiotics, by avoiding antibiotics. If you take repeated doses of antibiotics, you kill the good bacteria and you alter your gut bacteria. So antibiotics should be given only when needed. And in some cases where patients have severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's, they're using fecal transplants where they're taking the stool from healthy people and putting it into the intestines of, of, uh, of the patients who would suffer from these diseases. So <clears throat> these are the bacteria, the bad bacteria, trying to set up a colony in your intestine. And what, what will prevent them from setting up a colony? If your gut, if the food which you put into, the, into, your, into your intestine is healthy, then these bad bacteria will really struggle. So we talk about the prebiotic diet. These are foods which are really good for your intestines. Top prebiotic foods are foods which are rich in fiber. Also raw onions, raw garlic, Eat apples with the skin on, eat slightly unripe bananas, like slightly raw bananas, oats, blueberries, asparagus, and artichokes are the top foods for the prebiotic, um, for prebiotic um, value or uh, benefits. So there are many other things. Um, I mentioned the apple with the skin on. Um, I mentioned the brown rice, lots of different types of beans, oranges. So basically a, a diet really healthy in beans, fiber, lots of vegetables, lots of different types of fruits, um, ginger as well. Um, so try to add and eat many different types of food and beans and eat across the spectrum, different colors. You see nature has given us so many different colors and eat green and yellow and orange vegetables and fruits. And this will really help your gut microbiome. What about fermented foods? Yogurt is the most common fermented food we know. And kefir as well is a milk-based fermented food, a drink. But a lot of patients with autoimmune diseases or rheumatoid arthritis will have food intolerances to lactose and also to the cow milk casein. So studies, and there's enough evidence to show that eliminating dairy products for the diet from auto, for patients with autoimmune disease can give you significant or benefits. So as I said before, if you're eliminating dairy products, you need to take a calcium supplement. Now sauerkraut is used, uh, that's a sort of fermented vegetable. Kimchi is a, um, is a Korean fermented vegetable. In India, we use a lot of pickled vegetables and we could use this without the chili powder, which we commonly use. And also fermented foods such as idli. And in the south of India, and I'm not sure about the other parts, there's a habit of soaking rice overnight in water, and this ferments and eaten in morning as a rice gruel. And this was used a lot in the past, and, and it's unfortunate that people now have gone to start eating food from a box, such as cereals, which are not as healthy. We should go back to um, eating 
foods like this, which are more natural and fermented. So when foods are fermented, they also add, add to a healthy gut microbiome. So this is a study which showed that um, after one year of a vegetarian diet, the gut bacteria and rheumatoid arthritis patients improved significantly and uh, patients had a much healthier uh, gut bacteria and the rheumatoid arthritis was also better. But patients who had a vegan diet did better than patients who had lactose or milk products along with vegetarian diets. I'm not asking people to become vegetarian, but I'm asking people to add a lot of plants and a lot of fiber and be on a plant-based diet. So also um, uh, fasting or being on a Mediterranean diet also achieve changes in intestinal microflora. We're gonna have a lot more information on this because nowadays we're able to sequence the gut bacteria through new generation tests and kits and uh, we'll be able to prescribe much better. What about gluten? There's not a lot of studies done on gluten. There's studies done on, um, on diabetes, for instance, and there's studies done on, um, on uh, also on showing that there is a link between celiac disease, where patients are really gluten sensitive, and rheumatoid arthritis, and there are a lot of shared antibodies as well. But we do see in studies, which I have shown you so far, that fasting or going on a gluten-free diet for prolonged periods of time and eliminating dairy is beneficial to patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And I've already mentioned this a few times, uh, lactose intolerance and the casein in cow's milk can also be harmful. What about fasting? There's so many benefits from fasting. If you want to read more about this, you can follow a Professor Longo from Stanford University in the US. Fasting um, works on your neuroendocrine system from the brain to the muscles, to the liver, and, and even on your joints and your immune system. But we, we, we consider longer only does what's called fasting mimicking diets, that you do diet, diet, your diet or fast maybe once or twice a week, or you do this uh, fasting on a daily basis where you fast for 16 hours and eat for food for eight hours. And this helps your gut bacteria to regenerate in a healthy manner. And there have been uh, benefits shown for autoimmune diseases as well as for uh, cancer, people undergoing cancer chemotherapy. So these are again studies from Longo showing how it helps both autoimmunity and multiple sclerosis symptoms. What about probiotics? So in probiotics, are these back, are, the, are us taking capsules of healthy bacteria and hoping to regenerate our gut bacteria? There's a lot of controversy about this because there's so many millions of bacteria and we don't really know which are the good ones to put in. But mostly we need to have probiotics which contain lactobacillus or bifidobacterium. And if you're taking probiotics, you need to use between 1 billion to 5 billion dose of bacteria per day. The studies haven't really shown a lot of improvement in rheumatoid arthritis patients from probiotics, but I think combined with a healthy prebiotic diet, eliminating certain foods and using probiotics, you can have benefits. So the take home messages are, although we tell patients that there's not much of a role, there is a role for cyclical fasting, um, either doing a daily, a limited hour fasting or, or a one day a week you fast or a vegan Mediterranean diet and elimination of dairy and gluten. Uh, the gut microbiome is very, very uh, important. And my conclusion, what I tell my patients is eat a lot of plants, eat a plant-based diet rich in fiber and vegetables, stop smoking, avoid processed foods, additive sugar, as well as sugar substitutes. Maybe Splenda is okay. Avoid red meat, especially avoid gluten and dairy, fermented foods and probiotics are very helpful, vitamin D is essential, you should be on a vitamin D supplement, take calcium if you're not having dairy products, omega-3 and turmeric we've concluded, and weight loss, exercise and meditation are really important, but that's all the talk, uh, that's, that's probably going to be a whole other talk, which I'll come back to you shortly. So thank you for listening, and um, we'll see you soon.